Oh, it's so, I mean, that is the land of unconfirmed. Yes, that's we came, that. we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> <laughs> did it have anything to do with your visit? No, oh, I'm sure it did. <laughs> They're going to be captured or killed. Democratic Jewish state between Israel and the United States. The desert is blooming again, and we can be so proud. Iran is the largest supporter of terrorism in the world today. <laughs> out of sight, out of touch. That's pretty humorous, Dave. <laughs> We have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children than died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. Well, well friends, I'm David Vos. I'm having a wonderful evening here in Texas. It was a wonderful day. Went out to the lake, had a great time. Hope you're all having a wonderful day where you are. Look at your screen. You'll see there is a picture of what appears to be um, Angela Merkel along with Theresa May and Dahlia Greibeskite. Now, this is going around Facebook and so forth, and they're saying, how could this be? I mean, on so many levels. First of all, these three women are about the exact same age. They're all ruling over major countries in the world. Okay, that alone, forget the picture. The picture is just showing you a coincidence, or is it, a, a certain oddity about our world today that you wouldn't even have probably noticed without this picture. So whether or not this is a real picture of these three women when they were younger as teenagers or not, it still is mind-boggling to think about these three women all about the exact same age now ruling major countries of the world. I mean, is there a conspiracy? Yes, there is, obviously. Somebody has put these older women into office just as they were trying to do here in America with Hillary Clinton. It seems to be their thing. I don't know. I guess they're trying to promote this kind of thing all around the world. It seems to be an agenda. So, I, so yes, I'm going to be very sexist and say that neither uh, Angela Merkel or Theresa May or any of these other women got to the position that they are in because of their good looks, certainly, or because of their prowess or their intelligence level or any other thing. Simply, they were put into office and yes, I dare say, oh, wait for it, here it comes. I'm sorry, all of you black friends out there, I love you very much, but Barack Obama was not put into office because of his charisma, because he was so dang good looking. Or such a great speaker. I never thought he was such a great speaker in the first place. Okay, I, I'm not, see, maybe it's because I'm not black. I don't know. But I don't really get into somebody standing up there looking out at the audience as though we're all stupid. Talking down to everybody. You know, sort of that self-pride kind of speech where you sort of puff out your chest and make everybody somehow think you're so smart. I mean, that never did appeal to me. But Barack Obama was put into office because he was, as his vice president said, very articulate. A black man that they chose to use that would win over the populace. Because they had an agenda at that time, they were going to be dealing with a lot of things going on in the Middle East with Muslims and so forth. And one of the things that they liked about Barack Obama is he lived in Kenya and was at one time a Muslim, I guess, went to Muslim schools, and his father was Muslim. And so they used Barack Obama, just as they're using Angela Merkel. But what about the picture? Well, if you look to the left, you'll see the little picture there with the three girls. These three young girls, uh, the one on the left is Angela Merkel, and that is actually... Uh, factual, that is Angela Merkel. However, here's the stickler. Here's what they're saying. The other two girls are not who they are claiming they are. These other two girls are not 
the United Kingdom Prime Minister Theresa May or the Lithuanian President Delia Grybauskite. But I went to a website and I looked it up to see what was the deal with this picture because it was very odd to me. So I went to Snopes, which is supposed to be the end-all place where you go to find out what's real and what's fake. And they said this is fake because the other two girls weren't who they are supposed to be. But they never in that article told me who those girls actually were. In fact, they said they didn't know. They could not identify the other two girls. So how could they say that this is a fake picture, that it isn't a picture of the three girls, if they don't know the identity of the three girls? I mean, that seems like uh, a strange way to prove something. See, they start off saying, we're going to disprove that these three girls are these three older prime ministers of major countries by telling you that we cannot identify the girls. That seems to be the exact same argument that they're using for the misinformation. Because according to the misinformation, they're going to tell you who these three girls are based on the way they look. Right? Just on the way that they look, they're going to say, see, this is the three prime ministers all grown up. But Snopes is saying, no, that can't be because look at this one girl. And you'll see that picture here. And so they show you a picture of Theresa May at the same time of her life. An actual picture that can be verified as her. And they put it side by side, this other girl in the picture, and say, see, that's not her. Well, you know, for me, that doesn't do it. Because actually, in my opinion, both of those girls, side by side, they do look an awful lot alike. And just by looking at the picture, I can't tell you. I could not positively identify Theresa May in that picture, whether it is or it isn't her. So... Snopes does not know. They say they cannot identify these two girls. They do identify the one girl as Angela Merkel. Now, they say the picture was taken in 1972. And this is a picture of Angela Merkel with some friends at a New Year's Eve party in Berlin. So, she's behind the Iron Curtain at the time, having a party with two girls exactly the same age that literally look like the spitting image of the three prime ministers today. It's interesting that Angela Merkel ends up in childhood having two young friends that look exactly like the two prime ministers that are her friends at this time. There is a little bit of irony there. But Snopes says, we were unable to find a photograph of Greibeskite from the comparable time period, but we did locate an image of May, Theresa May, from 1971, a year before this viral photograph was taken. Comparing these two images makes it clear, makes it clear that Theresa May was not photographed at this party with Merkel, as the only resemblance between the two is that both possibly, but not definitely, have dark hair. No, I think there's more than just the dark hair. I think they both have the same nose. They're both uh, very similar. It, yes, it's pretty obvious that they do have the same color hair. But there is a year's difference here in these pictures. But uh, it looks like the girl on the right has her hair kind of puffed out. And the other girl's got it parted in a different place. But yes, this could be the same girl. However, I'm going to agree it's probably not the same two people. So, okay, this picture that's going around the internet saying that these three girls knew each other, uh, you know, way back when in 1972 is probably false. However, it is still interesting to discuss the fact that we, in our day and age, have these three women that are put into place, obviously are just puppets of somebody, right? George Soros is, seems to be running the entire world him and his financial backers, they seem to be putting in people into office. And what that means is we don't have a government anywhere in the world. Now, they didn't put Putin in, so that gives you a little idea. They didn't put Donald Trump in. They didn't like it when he got in there. So there is still, you know, thank goodness, Russia and the United States still has an elected official somewhere. Although they do seem to be able to put in all of our senators and all of our congressmen into office buying them off, spending billions of dollars to get them elected. They're not really representing us anywhere in the world 
uh, that Trudeau in Canada is obviously a puppet of the elite. And we see there are other puppets all around the world. They're in India and uh, Brazil and different places. They're playing the same race card or this woman's card all around the world just to get people elected, just so they can put their puppets in. And all around the world, people are falling for it. <laughs> They've taken over all the universities and the young people are being brainwashed right there in the universities. They're, they're, get, they're paying these young kids to go out and protest and picket and, and hold up signs. And these kids don't even know what they believe at this age. So they got their kids going around protesting guns in America and they've got children running around leading the debate, these very serious issues all around the world. It's that kind of thing, these, these little organizations that they, they create like ACORN. You know, Obama was a community organizer. See, he was brought up through the ranks by these communist organizations run by individuals like George Soros. That's right. Barack Obama was hired and worked for George Soros because ACORN and these other organizations such as MoveOn.org and Black Lives Matter and all of these organizations, ACORN, these are all organizations created and financed by George Soros. And so this is what's going on. Are we blind, friends? Are we all just stark raving mad? Do you not see that none of these people elected by our countries, any of the various countries around the world, none of them are being elected by the people. There is no democracy. Thank goodness that in this country, and I didn't, you know, I was really leery about that. When, when Donald Trump was running, I thought, man, you know, Hillary Clinton rigged the election for the Democrats. I really thought they were going to rig our election. We were going to get Hillary Clinton. I really did believe she was going to get in. Somehow they'd rig it. But I'll be darned, it appears that our election process is at least somewhat accurate. I mean, I'm sure they do rig it. Up to thousands of votes are probably bogus. But for the most part, if you get an overwhelming amount of people come out and vote for you, you're going to get into office. They can't stop you. And Donald Trump had thousands and thousands coming out to see him speak. He had a lot of excitement, a lot of grassroots and a lot of people running around saying this guy's genuine and they voted him in. So thank goodness. So anyway, I wanted to show you guys this picture. I thought it was pretty interesting. But yeah, from what we're told, Angela Merkel is in the picture. But the other two girls are not the other two ladies. So, But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and go. Friends, I hope you guys have a great day. This is David Vos. We'll see you again tomorrow. Yeah. Um, members who have proposed that bill have done that in the wake of this murder trial in Philadelphia. They argue that there really isn't much of a moral difference between what someone like Dr. Kermit Gosnell did to infants born at 23, 24, 25 weeks into pregnancy and what can happen at a, a clinic down the road in Maryland where a doctor says that yeah. he'll perform elective abortions 28 weeks into pregnancy. So the question I have for you is what is the moral difference between between what Dr. Gosnell did to a baby born alive at 23 weeks and aborting her moments before birth. What's okay, the you're probably enjoying that question a lot. I can see you savoring it. But let me just tell you this. Let me just, let me just tell you this. What was done in Philadelphia was reprehensible and everybody condemned it. For them to decide to disrespect a judgment a woman makes about her reproductive health is reprehensible. So Next the question. Next question. What's the moral difference then between 26 weeks elective abortion and the killing of that same infant born alive? This is the issue that they're talking about. This is not the issue. They are saying that there's no uh, abortion. They want to make it a federal law that there be no abortion in our country. You're taking the extreme case. You're taking the extreme case. And what I'm saying to you is what happened in Philadelphia was reprehensible. And I do not think you use that. I'm not going to have this conversation with you because you obviously have an agenda. You're not interested in having an answer. But I have responded to you to the extent that I'm going to respond to you because I want to tell you something. As a mother of five children, my oldest child is six years old the day I brought my fifth child home from the hospital. As a practicing and respectful Catholic, 
This is sacred ground to me when we talk about this. I don't think it should have anything to do with politics. And that's where you're taking it, and I'm not going there. Yes, sir. Um, next Wednesday. One of the sickest people, one of the most corrupt people in American political history is Maxine Waters. I stand by those words. I, I actually invite Ms. Waters on this show to explain where the tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars went when she was in charge of Fannie and Freddie, one or the other, I don't remember which, the great housing authority. And her husband was, I believe, in charge of a bank. Maxine Waters, one of the most hateful, despicable people in political history in this country, had the nerve to say that even if Trump was gone, she will go after Pence. So if you think that the hatred would stop with Trump, you're mistaken. They are on a vendetta against all things of a certain stripe, to put it very mildly. Here is Maxine Waters, who has never been investigated for her scandalous involvement in the loss of billions of dollars when she was in charge of Freddie or Fannie in clip 05. Who does he think he is? Why does he think he's going to get away with what he's doing? There are those who may be afraid of him, but as the young folks say, I ain't scared. Not one bit. Not one bit, and neither should you be. And neither should you think you have to accept this. Because there's not a lot that you can do about it. And you don't have to wait. And then there are those who say, what, what if we impeach him? What about Pence? What do you mean, what about him? We go after him. Now, you understand what she's saying. She wants the mob in the streets. She understands politics quite well. When you're dealing with a bunch of dummies who you've bamboozled for over 20 years, while you're allegedly representing them, you're making out very well for yourself indeed. The classic technique, Maxine Waters does not even live in her own district. She lives in a multi-million dollar mansion outside of her poor, poor district. So she says, huh, I got it. Instead of them looking at what I've done when I haven't helped them, I'll turn them to hate Trump. Then I'll make them hate Pence because hate works. Hate sells. Hate is a big business for us. We've made billions of dollars while they're looking the other way. So we'll keep up the hatred. So no, of course he shouldn't resign. But I'm asking the question for a good reason. Because they're making it sound like he's the evil one. And it's gotten so bad, my friends of the Savage Nation. Where's Hollywood all of a sudden? Where's Billy Joel? Where are all of the great leftists who have such bleeding hearts? Maybe they'll blame the Russians for this, too. Where's Maxine Waters claiming that the Russians colluded with Trump to flood Houston? It's sickening. Well, uh, by the way, speaking of my website, michaelsavage.com, I have some information for you about that. Starting on the 31st, we are shifting. Wow, this is great. I just got my 23andMe DNA testing kit in the mail. All I gotta do is send some of my saliva and I'll know in a few short days whether I'm a real Indian or not. I wanna challenge Elizabeth Warren to do the same. I'm calling this now the real Indian versus fake Indian challenge. Elizabeth, why don't you do this? It's really, really simple. Being Native American has been part of my story, I guess, since the day I was born. Elizabeth Warren? Even someone, you know, that's professor should have some type of ethics. How can you trust a person like that? You know, if they're, if they're willing to lie about themselves and where they're from and who they are, you know. My name is Dale French. I was born and raised here on the Cherokee Indian Reservation. I just don't, I just don't approve of that. that. That's not right at all. She's lying to the American public by running for public office of claiming of a race that, that she's not. If she's claiming that she's Native American, prove it. Yeah, Elizabeth Warren should be ashamed of herself. So, be slapping the Native Americans in the face. I don't think it's right. In a way, it feels like they're making fun of our heritage because they don't have any realization of what we went through as a people. Uh, Professor Warren should be ashamed. It's wrong to say you're a Cherokee if you can't provide like, the proof of it. Can she come home and stand here and come out and say who are her relatives and they'll come down and greet her? or take her up to their community. If you have no documentation of who you are, then you don't have the right to call yourself a Cherokee. It's the truth. That's what we need. We need the truth, you know.
And whenever tyrants come into your town or city, it's important to confront them, whether they're politicians or bureaucrats. Over four years ago, I was interviewing former and current CIA officials about the Delta Force murdering people in Waco. They were extremely concerned. That's now been borne out in the Dallas Morning News and other publications. When are you finally going to come clean about the mass murder and using high-level special operations killers to kill Americans for publicity? Very important. Number one about the Delta Force. Number two, Senator John Danforth, your special counsel. How can he be independent, as you and others have said, when he is appointed by you to, uh, to investigate you? That's the question. Thank you. The crowd giggled and laughed, and Reno refused to answer the question. Makes you proud to be an American. By 1924, Curley was living in poverty in France. An old friend and famous literary figure and occultist, Frank Harris, kindly took him under his roof. Frank Harris lived with a woman by the name of Nellie O'Hara. If what has been written in later years can be believed, Nellie had a friend in America, Pauline Pierce, who was married to Marvin Pierce, head of the McCall Corporation. In early 1924, Pauline traveled to France to stay with her friend. Thus it was that four individuals came together, Frank Harris, Nellie O'Hara, Pauline Pierce, and Alistair Crowley. According to Crowley's diaries, during this period in Paris, Crowley underwent the supreme ordeal, linked with his realization of the grade of Ipsissimus. According to a description of the right, on the appointed day, the candidate is attended by one or more chosen and experienced attendants whose duty is A. To exhaust him sexually by every known means B. To rouse him sexually by every known means Every device and artifice of the courtesan is to be employed and every stimulant known to the physician. If Crowley did go through this ordeal in 1924, then it is highly likely, based on his previous experiences, that his closest associates of that time, including Nellie and Pauline, performed as his magical assistants. Pauline Pierce returned to America in early October of 1924. Eight months later, on June the 8th, 1925, she gave birth to a girl named Barbara. Barbara Pierce married George H.W. Bush, who eventually became the 41st President of the United States. And they had a son, George W. Bush, the 43rd President of the United States. Could the wickedest man in the world, Alistair Crowley, be George W. Bush's grandfather? In 1925, Crowley received a letter from Theodore Roos of the OTO in Germany. A vacancy had become available for international head of the OTO. They had chosen Baphomet. To the British, and indeed the Americans, I may have been a flesh-eating devil, but the Germans obviously still appreciated the law of Thelema. I was still Baphomet, an Ipsissimus, the Great Beast 666. 